Dixon Hall Lewis was a states rights Democrat who supported slavery and served as a United States representative and senator from Alabama. Large and in charge, he was very nearly elected Speaker of the House in the 26th Congress, receiving 113 votes on the 8th ballot, just four votes light of the 117 needed to be elected. A strikingly obese figure, Lewis was known to weigh as much as 500 pounds, making him the heaviest member of Congress ever. Specially constructed and reinforced chairs were provided for him in the Senate chambers. Furthermore, his carriage was fitted with unusually heavy suspension springs. That may have something to do with the rumor. On at least one occasion, his heft caused him to fall through the bottom of a stagecoach. A popular witticism among Lewis's colleagues was the observation that Alabama had the largest representation of any state. When retracing the growth of Dixon Lewis's political career, we arrive at his birth on Bothwick Plantation in Didwitty County, Virginia. After graduating from the University of South Carolina in 1820, he moved to Alabama, where by 1826, he practiced law in the state's capital, Montgomery. As a duly elected member of the Alabama House of Representatives, three years later, Dixon Lewis was elected as a states' rights Democrat to the 21st United States Congress serving until he resigned from the House to join the Senate in 1844. On that note, Lewis was appointed by his brother-in-law, Alabama Governor Benjamin Fitzpatrick, to the United States Senate to fill the vacancy caused by the resignation of William R. King. Gotta keep it in the family, folks. While identifying Lewis as racist may both fancy and offend him, he did support slavery. As a matter of fact, in 1847, he bought at Baltimore 15 or $20,000 worth of Africans for use of himself and his son on their plantations at home. An Alabama publication called the State Guard wrote, the African traders here and elsewhere give it up that they know nothing about Africans when Dixon H. Lewis is about. As you can imagine, the word African is a substitute for another word that was used. Exploring whatever legal grounds were available to preserve the institution of slavery, he supported nullification, a theory proposing that state governments can overrule federal law. His powerful speeches helped put Alabama on the road to secession. Keep in mind, he gave these grand oratory spectacles sitting down because standing up was difficult for him. Talk about likability and charisma. Dude had his own gravitational pull. When he wasn't advocating for the relentless enslavement of his fellow man, between 1831 and 1835, Lewis served as the chairman of the United States House Committee on Indian Affairs. There, in 1831, he and his colleagues oversaw the implementation of the Trail of Tears program, which featured the forced displacement of approximately 60,000 indigenous American people over the subsequent 20 years. Those were just the lucky ones. That's not to mention the additional thousands of Native Americans within the country that were ethnically cleansed by the United States government as the result of countless wars and armed conflicts that continued into the early 20th century. Lewis's obesity took its toll on his health. Feeling weighed down by the burden, he traveled to New York City in search of medical advice. He never left the Big Apple. He died there at the age of 46. Transporting his body home proved too difficult, so he was buried in Brooklyn's hot stop in Greenwood Cemetery, an ironic fate for a hot-blooded Southerner. 
Alrighty everybody, that's going to do it for today's video. For whatever reason, it just felt right to do it in a southern accent. Uh, let me know, was the accent good or not? I'm from California, but my grandfather is from Arkansas, so I did have some exposure with this way of speaking throughout my childhood. Nonetheless, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time.